What do you think about Copernicus's views on the universe in relation to Galileo's? And this is from Pierre from New Brunswick, Canada. So there's a question about Copernicus in relation to Galileo. Is there a difference? How do they relate? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, frankly, Galileo's uh, mathematical arguments for uh, heliocentrism uh, were a little bit more sophisticated than Copernicus's. But at the end of the day, Copernicus and Galileo certainly agreed that the, the heliocentric universe was uh, plausible and uh, they did have the mathematical proof for it, but neither of them had the observational evidence for it. Copernicus had the humility not to proclaim it as a fact. Galileo did not. So there's a difference there. Um, but uh, for all intents and purposes, they are in agreement with heliocentrism. Uh, Nicholas Copernicus, of course, was a Catholic cleric, and all um, you know, Galileo was not. But he was certainly a theist, and certainly a um, you know a, a, a somebody who I, I think really did acknowledge God in his own life. Right now, in the case of Galileo, so as we said before, he had some pretty tight relationships, not only with the Pope but some other cardinals, and I think even the cardinal who then became Pope was somebody. I think for his second trial, he actually thought that uh, because of his relationship mm -hmm. there, he might fare better. What exactly was his punishment? Mm -hmm. You alluded to it earlier. Yeah, well, actually his punishment was exile in, a, in an Italian villa uh, that was actually <laughs> really si quite- Can we sign up for that one? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it, uh, as punishment goes, it's really pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, honestly, uh, I think, you know, Urban VIII didn't want to in any way, <clears throat> you know, uh, undermine uh, Galileo's life. I mean, they, they had been friends uh, together and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, there, certainly Galileo was not tortured. You know, some have contended that he was tortured. It's certainly not. And, you know, uh, Urban VIII would never have allowed it. And, and uh, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, you know, people could come and go and, and visit with him. And, of course, he did have a, a good relationship with his sister and, and others, you know, and, the, and the, the, there's a lot lot of uh, very interesting, you know, the exchange of the letters between mm -hmm. them. Galileo was not an unhappy person uh, in, in exile. Certainly he would have wanted to have, uh, you know, published and been a public figure, but, you know, he kind of undermined himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, that's not a particularly smart thing to do, you know, <laughs> to insult the Pope who'd been your friend. I mean, he's the one guy that wanted to help you, and then you go in and, and, and mock him. You know, it just, it just right. it's so strange. It, it, it's just like ego gone crazy and then, you know, he sort of paid for it. But like I said, you know, today, you know, we would view his offense, a similar offense would be like, you know, if you lie to the IRS or you lie under oath in a court of law or you, um, you know, lie in the financial statements of a, of a corporation and your investors lose money. Well, it's, you know, the church felt responsible for this relationship between anthropology and cosmology at the time, and, and the Pope felt a, a, a real responsibility to it, much like a fiduciary has responsibilities to uh, his or her investors. So, so the idea is if you, if you l say you're going to do something, and then you do the opposite, and, and what you were asked to do was reasonable. Don't proclaim something as a fact without the evidence. That's a reasonable request. And then you go back you say, I won't do it, trust me, hmm. publish a book, and then go ahead and do it, then for all intents and purposes, right. what, you're, what you're dealing with is, is pretty much a, uh, uh, you know, a right. lost cause at that juncture. Right. And, and uh, well, you know, like I said, it, you know, be like, right. you know, lying on your, uh, on your, on your investment, well, uh, on your uh, financial let's statements. Let's not get so. personal with this, Father, so. about uh, our own yeah. particular <laughs> sins here in relation to taxes and things <laughs> of the ilk. Uh, and you have a vast knowledge of the market from your earlier uh, uh, approach to life. Oh, yes. Let me ask you a question, <laughs> yes, though. Uh, I'm wondering, sometimes yeah. when I hear these things, when you hear theories and stuff like that, I wonder if we don't run into some of that sometimes ourselves. 
in relation to the church when there may be particular theologians who are positing certain ideas or discussions are going on in Rome on different topics yeah. that these things then get pushed forward as if they're either they're fact or they're going to happen when yeah. they're purely under review. Uh, th that's right, and and again, when this happens, you know, the church does get, uh, you know, um, and has a right to be not only, uh, uh, you know, uh, agitated at this because, of course, you know, when you're asked to, to, to do something, to hold up until they can put the evidence together or hold up until there can be a substantial case made for something, and then somebody goes ahead and pushes it forward, you know, and, you know, and it does have impacts. It has impacts on people spiritual lives, right? The, the church speaks for, you know, a billion people, right? I mean, and, and not just the billion in the church, it, it speaks for way beyond, you know, uh, that billion. And so, you, you know, it has a huge impact. And so theologians should be respectful uh, of the church's position relative to, to you know, creating uh, this ambiance of, of secure, you know, doctrine that is consistent with what, you know, Jesus Christ meant that it's consistent with what the Apostolic Church meant. It's consistent with where the Holy Spirit is inspiring uh, the, the Pope to go. And, and you have to be respectful of that mm -hmm. because, you know, nobody on the outside without, you know, having the charism of the Pope and the bishops, uh, the charism of what's called mm -hmm. magisterium, nobody can, 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 you know, have a lock on truth and, and just sort of say, I'm going to go out on my own and and do this. So for all mm -hmm. intents and purposes, we have to be respectful uh, of that. And yes, of course, when theologians do these kinds of things, they, they have an impact on the spiritual lives of, you know, many, many people. And of course, you, you have to be right. very careful that it's consistent with what Jesus and the apostolic church intended. What did Jesus have? To, what mm -hmm. would Jesus say about this? And, and, and we have to ask ourselves that question, put ultimately the authority into the hands of the Pope who's been given that charism by Jesus himself, mm -hmm. right? That I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom uh, of, of heaven. What you declare loosed on earth shall be uh, loosed in heaven. Whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven.